KD2 ETP here. Today I'm going to be installing on uh, the Home Shack the um, Solar SolarCon A99, which was um, years ago, I uh, believe it's the Antron A99. Um, same antenna, uh, different manufacturer. It says that it's made in the U.S., which I guess is a good thing. And uh, let's take a look, see what's in the box, let's say. So, uh, mounting uh, hardware. New bolts and whatnot. And uh, let me pull this out. Sorry, videoing it in hand here. Um, that is the top section. And I'm just going to dump this out. All right. So here's the bottom section. I did not get the ground plane kit, but um, sorry about the camera work. Um. Nice threaded ends. Looks like it's pretty well made. It says 2021 there. I don't know if that's when it was made. It says certified compliance. Uh, right here are the rings that you use for tuning. Uh, what is it? PL259 to SO239. So... We'll get it together. I'm going to get it on the garage roof. I got relatively a flat roof and a nice base to set it on. And I'm just going to set it up full for right now. You can cut this thing to length if you're looking for a particular resonant frequency. And in the book here, they actually give you a table on the frequencies and how many inches to cut off the top. So what you would do, here's the top section, you, would, you can pull this cap off. And then you would measure down, cut it with a hacksaw, um, and be real careful that you don't uh, mess up the fiberglass. And then you would stick the cap back on, and that would give you your resonance to whatever frequency you wanted to cut it for. Um, <clears throat> they do say that you can tune it from 10 to 20 meters. Um, just the way that it is. So I'm going to try that. I want to see, I would like it. I'm really wanting it resonant at 10, around 10 meters. So I'm going to put it all together though. First, I'm going to put the, uh, antennalizer on it and see what I get on the MFJ one. And then I'm going to kind of, uh, yeah, <laughs> then I'm going to compare that to the antenna analyzer that is built into the Zygu 6100 and see how they match up. Um, it'll be interesting to play around with, see what we can get it resonant at. But I would, um, ideally, I want it for the 10 meter band, so I will be cutting it down to get resonance at that frequency. And then, I don't know, we'll see if we can tune it up from there to other frequencies. So, more to this video later. Again, this is the um, SolarCon A99. And uh, we'll be getting back in just a few minutes. Okay, so one tip that I like to do when I put together these screw-type antennas is that is copper-clad never sees. Um, so it makes a nice electrical connection. Put a little bit there, put a little bit there. And I also do the connector in the bottom, um, but not in the center part, obviously. Oop, here. Um, because... Obviously, it's electrically connected too, but it does help on the threads, keeps them nice. And I find that I don't tape my connections um, up to try and seal out water. It seems to act as a pretty good sealant to not allow water to get through there. Um, as long as your coax is hanging straight up and down, that is. So it's worked really well for me in the past. I've had antennas up for several years like that so and then when you take them apart they come apart nice and easy with that it helps with dissimilar metals keeping them from messing with each other and whatnot so so there's the rest of the mounting equipment um i just put it together here and as you can if you look right in there there's actually a lock washer that's got to go in there on each section that it comes with and, oh, and right here so now they're screwed together, the lock washer is compressed, um, not over tightened. As you can see, it didn't spread the lock washer. And that's a common thing that um, people do. They like to tighten everything too tight, but really a lock washer, once it gets compressed, that's it. That's all it really needs. Um, 
pretty close um, just a tiny bit after that but you should not tighten them so much that it actually spreads the lock washer in the gap so I found that the current size of this U-bolt would not fit around the base that I have here for it so I used the um, uh, another mounting system that I had from another antenna seems to be on there okay um, I need to uh, prop up this end a little bit because it's kind of at an angle I don't know, you know, it's not going to make that much of a difference, but I'd like to have it as level as I can. I got my ground wire, if you see it in there, sandwiched in between, going down. And then I'm going to attach that to my main ground coming into my house on the side over here. Um, and that way that antenna is good and grounded. And then I will get it on the air. We'll see what it looks like under the SWR meter. I got the coax connected, made a little RF choke there. Um, on the base there you can see it about eight wraps of uh coax had a little bit of extra coax so i figured i'd use it the rest i just got stretched around the roof gonna get that ground hooked up and then we will um do some testing okay i currently have this hooked up to the zygu um, x6100 i was going to use my mfj analyzer but unfortunately i don't know something's wrong with it i don't know what's going on with it but whatever let's look into that um anyhow um, this has a SWR function on it here. And right here, if I do an SWR scan, it actually, if you look, that's 28.175, it's flat. And that gets me up to about uh, 28,800. A little hump there in the middle, but still only 2 to 1. Um, and I don't have that grounded yet, so I think that's interesting. You can see it counting through where it is. And so I can exit that. No. Um, so that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, but what else, um, what, also what I want to do is check this on some of the other bands. I'm going to go up to, um, or I'm going to go down to um, 21, uh, megahertz. I'm on AM here for some reason, but whatever. And uh, let's check this out and see what this does for me. So that's showing me pretty flat from 21200 to uh, 21736 or something. So, wow, that's um, interesting, I must say. Okay, now I want to go up again. So I have not put the, I did put the ground wire on like the scene, but I did not, um, let's see what we get on. Ooh, big spike on 18, so no good there, <laughs> unfortunately. But I was not expecting much with that anyways. Um, I was just trying to get an idea way up on there. Probably won't be able to tune it with the tuner from there. Let's see what it looks like on 14 megs. Right. We'll hit the scan. And we're running about three consistently. So I can live with that. I mean, I could definitely tune that down. A little spike up in the higher end. But for the most part... Um, there's quite a bit of usable frequency there. Up to about 2350 it looks like. Let's see where it spikes. Yeah, I'm going to say like uh, about 23... Uh, 14, 2350 it spikes, but interesting. Not horrible. At, um, you know, definitely tunable. So, I'm just on receive now. I did not check the SWRs. I'm assuming they're going to be pretty high. I mean, I can, I guess. Why not? We did the other ones. Um, let's take a look and see what this um, does for us. And Yeah, I, like I said, I figured this would be high. Not a tuning range, though, it doesn't look like. I think I could tune that. Um, it's a weird spike where we are, but... Um, 
yeah, I don't know. I'm not really concerned about 40 meters on this one. I figured I uh, uh, was going to be using it mostly for 10 and to see if I could tune it on 20. It looks like on 21 it isn't too bad either, so I can use it on 15 um, megahertz as well. Um, pretty good. I'm going to be hooking this up to the 991A, and uh, that's going to be my secondary antenna on there. I have a disc cone for the um, two, 2 meter, 70 centimeter side, and this will be the HF side antenna currently. Uh, I'm going to play around with that a little later, and we'll see how it uh, actually performs on the bands. i got to go out and ground it. I'm going to ground it, and then I'm going to come back and check the SWRs and see how that went um, with me grounding it. Right now, there's like a 50-foot, roughly, maybe 60 or more feet of um, ground wire on that uh, that I put on there. I just threw over the side of the house for now. Uh, I'm going to shorten that up, connect it to the grounding system, and we'll see what that does to the SWRs. Okay, the antenna's up there, and then I got this green wire coming down. I'm going to use for the ground wire. You can see how much I have on there. Um, I need to bring it over to, well, the main grounds are back in there. So I got to go through all these delicious blackberry bushes, um, which we already picked, and um, get it hooked up to the, the ground. You can see where, if you look right under that service entrance cable, the ground comes down. I'll get down towards the ground there, attach it on there with a split bolt. And then we will check the SWRs again. Okay, back down in the shack again. Oh, and I did uh, do a little uh, remodeling, let's say. I ended up hooking this up up above, and um, and I did some configuration here, but I'm still not done yet. I got, I'll be doing more. But anyways, so let's see. Now we're on 40, and we know it didn't tune good on 40, and I know it's not going to tune good on 40. So let me go back down here, um, and then um, we'll start again. Oop. right there on 10 and now let's hit the scan again and see how that messed with us and you can see it's going pretty well um, we still got that little hump there but it did not change the SWRs on 10 meters and that goes to about 28 uh, um, 701 so let me stop that for a minute and let's move this up a little bit. Let's see if that'll help. If I um, if I, I think if I move it up, oops, sorry. If I think if I move it up here, I can start it up higher. And we'll see how far it goes up there. And we'll do that again. And so not bad, all the way up to 26, 9 something. Um, it still seems pretty flat. So I'll check more of that, but let's go up a band. Um, we were getting such good readings up there on 21 megahertz. I want to see, um, oops, wrong way, sorry. Let's see what it looks like on 21 megs. And so from about 2100... So that's flat across the entire uh, 15 megahertz band. That's interesting. So, okay, I know I jumped over 12 before, but let's go back to 12. Um, let me stop that. Let's uh, see what's on um, 12 meters. So, so far, 10 and um, 15 meters, it's great flat. Um, and you can't ask for any better than that. And I haven't done anything, no adjustments on that antenna or anything. I just put it together the way that it was. You saw it on the roof, the way I had it grounded and everything. So, you know, res re results will vary. So there you go. I mean, two, less than two across the whole 12-meter um, band. So, so far, this, this antenna's flat on 10 12 and 15 that's that's awesome so that's good to know now we'll go up a little bit more um, 
Sorry. I'm down. I'm down. I'm going to go down. Sorry. And we'll try it on 20 again. And we know we weren't getting great, but um, let's see what, what it's got anyways on 20 meters. So again, up in the three um, range there. And I'm going to raise this up too a little bit. Yeah, see, so we're jumping way up. But that's way up towards the end. Um, let's see what happens again. Scanned a little differently that time, about four. But tunable, you know what I mean? That's the thing, what I'm looking at is really that it's tunable throughout most of the band. So... It seems to increase. It increased a little bit this time. So let's see what happens when we go one more time. See if it is, does it keep does it keep climbing up on us? Is the real question here. And so that seems to be about flat. But like I said, definitely tunable on twenty. Um, again, you saw on the um, upper bands that um, you know twenty one megahertz flat, almost the whole band. Uh, or 5 and 24 megahertz flat on that band, the 12 meter band, and then right down to 10, um, flat on the 10 meter band. So, three bands flat, no tuner required. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and I will be trying that out. Like I said, um, that's going to be on the FT991A, that'll be the HF antenna for that currently, and uh, we'll be playing around with it. I will mess around a little while once I get the tripod set up and everything. I just got really just got home and uh, I wanted to get that antenna up before it rained. So, um, and then I don't know. I got to see what's wrong with that MFJ analyzer. I don't know what's going on there. I'm trying to charge the battery right now. See what happens. Maybe that'll help. Um, it should work off power. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Um, but you know that's something I'll have to look into. Um, yeah, always tinkering with something in the shack. So. Uh, KD2ETP, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, all that nonsense, and, uh, you know, uh, comment if you'd like. Um, I'm sorry to all the hams out there that uh, subscribed to me just for the ham content, that I have not been doing much ham content lately, and I did get this antenna. I've had it for a while, a couple weeks now, and I wanted to get it up, and uh, I wanted to make a video about it. So this is just a video on putting it together and everything. The following video will be on performance. KD2ETP saying 73.